Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for us to review the big stories on the front pages of the national dailies. And as usual, we do have a guest who will be joining the conversation, Ezekiel Nya Etok, uh, public affairs analyst. Thank you, Ezekiel Nya Etok, for joining us this morning. So always a pleasure. I'm always happy to be on PLOS TV Africa. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, we'll start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, on the front page of the leadership newspaper, 2022 budget defense, Senate rejects 287 billion Naira loan requests for water projects. So it probably might just feel like it's a season where the Senate is rejecting a lot. And, you know, it's expected because it should be an oversight function of, uh, you know, the Senate. 2022 budget defense senate rejects 287 billion loan requests for water projects and it's boldly written on the front page of the leadership newspaper you find more details on page four summons minister says no visible result for previous loans you also have a writer saying approves 1000 naira daily feeding for prisoners uh, away from the board caption, you also have Nigeria's oil reserve to last for 49 years, says World Bank. Uh, that's also on page four of the leadership newspaper this morning. Now, I'm still looking at the front page of the leadership. You also have another headline saying Nigeria's population growing by 5 million annually. The vice president is quoted on page six. NNPC to fix 21 federal roads at 621.2 billion naira. It's also another interesting caption on page six of the leadership newspaper. And just as we progress, uh, you also find Cod freezes Benway bank accounts over 333 million naira debts. That's on page seven. Talking about the People's Democratic Convention, anxiety grips PDP as court rules today, uh, the case of Prince Uche Sekandas. You also have another caption saying, we're not opposed to autonomy for judiciary. Uh, that's what the governors are saying, or really. Uh, that's also another interesting caption, and that's on uh, page six as well of the leadership newspaper. If you pick up a copy, you get all of the information. Now, away from the leadership, I'd like to check out the Nation newspaper this morning. On the front page of the Nation newspaper, you have governors lobby senators and reps against direct primaries. Uh, quite different from what the leadership is reporting. Governors lobby senators and reps against direct primaries. It's a bold caption. You find, we have gone far with Electoral Act Amendment, says Senate spokesman. You also have IPOP threats. Ohaneze calls for urgent political solution. Hours after lunch, Inara e app down on Google's Play Store. I have a lot of persons who are complaining that uh, you can't find the Inara e uh, app down the Google Play Store. I remember the conversation we had on this platform and we said the issue of acceptability and adaptability and workability is a major concern with this particular development. And then 2021, you have why I want to be governor by Soludo, INEC free to transmit poll result electronically, uh, find out who's saying all of that, ADC candidate unveils uh, a model that's what you also find and the uh, uk varsity says the Paris museum return looted artifact to nigeria says uh, there's a plan to return the artifact to nigeria uh, that's a good one you find all of the information on page 22 of the nation newspaper this morning i'd move away from the nation newspaper and quickly check out uh, the Daily Independent newspaper this morning and find out what big stories we have on the Daily Independent. Now, on the board caption, quite different from what you have on the Nation and on the Leadership newspaper. NNPC gets approval to fix 21 federal roads at 621.2 billion naira. NNPC gets approval to fix 21 federal roads 
at 621.2 billion naira. You have the Federal Executive Council OK's 4 billion for transmission line and substation in Anambra and Enugu. All of that uh, you find on the front page of uh, the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And away from the board caption, Anambra Guba Paul Ohaneze urges IPOP to cancel seven days sit at home order. Now, there's been a lot of reaction. There's been a lot of talks uh, where you find stakeholders uh, advising that there should be some form of dialogue. Uh, we hope that this actually ends very well. Ask Southeast governors to convene emergency stakeholders meeting. We will recover from attacks on our facilities. Ainek is quoted on all of that ahead of the Anambra election slated for the 6th of November. And... Uh, Senate rejects Buhari's $700 million loan request and summons minister. That's on page four. Stop using security operatives to intimidate judges. The governor of River State, uh, Yesom Wike, tells the federal government, and that's on page five. Strike sharing formula of $22.1 billion and allowances Brewing crisis in varsities, and that's on page five. You have the affair Babalola multi system performs first kidney transplant, is quite commendable, and that's on page five. PDP convention, last minute effort to dissuade secondos fails as appeal rules today. That's also another caption you find on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And federal government puts the Zianis property for sale. Uh, that's on page two of the Daily Independent. Smugglers attack customs officer, kill one and another missing. Uh, really, really sad. Uh, that's it on the Daily Independent. There are more interesting headlines. I'm sure you pick up a copy to get all of the information. Now, let's move away from that and check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And it says, Ohaneze begs IPOP for peace as federal government insists on Anambra elections. That might just be dominating uh, the stories on the front pages this morning. Make polling units accessible. National Assembly tells service chiefs, we are fully prepared, INEC chairman is quoted, don't take IPOP's threat lightly, XIGP tells federal government. Currency swap, Nigeria banks to begin operation in China. Uh, that's what the envoy is quoted to say. And uh, you also have another interesting headline saying, Court freezes Bainway accounts over 333 million naira loan. Despite initial opposition, Bainway undo other state wants federal government for ranches. And that's also another caption on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Oh, well, that's the much that we can take on uh, the front pages of our national dailies. Uh, let's head back to Ezekiel Nyaitok. Uh, Ezekiel Nyaitok, uh, it's good to have you join us once again uh, on the segment. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's uh, start off with the caption on the leadership newspaper again the senate rejects 287 billion naira loan for uh, that's a request for water projects i uh, would like to quickly share your thoughts on that um do i call it a refreshing uh, welcome a pleasant surprise so to speak because senate seems to be of the opinion that anything that comes from the executive should go but i think maybe there are drawing a line now between the ministries and then the presidency because it seems everything that comes from the presidency goes but this seems to be coming from any of the mdas and um, again i like the the excuse they gave or the reason i would rather call it reason they gave in the sense that they said what we gave you in the past we've not seen results so why do you want another one when the, the one that we gave before we've not seen results which means that they are saying their oversight function over the ministry is um, is what they can boast of. And from what they can boast of, they can see why they should give you any more 
money. I think this is a welcome relief to Nigerians generally because this issue of anything that comes from the presidency goes, I think it has, it's, it's taking a, a bad toll on Nigerians and um, I'm very happy they can do this. It means that um, they are probably they are scrutinizing the budget. So I think that um, the time has come when the Senate should do more of this. I commend them and I agree with them completely. And besides, when you look at the details of what is needed and what is to be applied and things like that, you realize that people just go getting funds. They don't think there's, there's it's a general mindset about um, getting money in government. They, they, they see it as what you can while you can and not that complete picture of the future and the destiny of a nation and that anything you borrow should be purpose specific and not only that having the mindset that a debt is something that must be repaid so you don't take money like i was talking to a group of young people yesterday i said when you go to borrow don't borrow 21,000 when you need 20,000. Even if they can approve 21,000, don't borrow 24. If you need 20,000, your borrowing must always be need based and re based on repayment plan per time. And don't think that the future will not go back to the past. <laughs> it sounds contradictory, but the future has a way of going back to the past. Let me tell you something, and I say this authoritatively. One day in this country, people will be called back to answer what they did while they were in office. It can take five years, it can take 10 years, and it won't take 15 years. So everybody in office must think tomorrow what you will not want to be called back as an old man to answer. Be careful not to do it. Don't think that the way that you've left office, it has gone. No. Okay. So I think if we have that mindset, we'll be a lot more circumspect in the decisions we take while in office. Uh, we still stay with the leadership newspaper this morning. Another interesting headline is about the confusion uh, and the anxiety that is ongoing with the People's Democratic Party. Today, uh, there will be a court ruling and um, there seem to be a lot of uh, feelings right now with the People's Democratic Party. What, what do you really make of this? I, I, I think it's um, a political game that is coming home to bite the, um, the PDP, unfortunately. Secundus had some months to go, and um, in the convention, in getting hold of the leadership of the party, I think there was this uh, unfortunate issue where they felt they needed to take hold on the national convention. And then um, by right, it's actually the national chairman that sets up the systems and structures for national convention. And because it's a national convention that would lead to the leadership or setting up the systems for 2023, which is mega, the governors and the leaders who were not happy with secondus felt they needed to get him out of the way. And they took on a, a style that um, Secundus, I, I don't know, I have my reservations, but uh, while I'm not too happy or while it's not too fair what they tried to do to him, uh, if you love the party and you care about the party, sometimes you may need to also bend over backwards to accept certain things so that the party can move forward. But I think that they've come to a position now where the battle line has been drawn. As of now, they have very last, um, what I would call the very last um, option, which is supposed to come up today. And that option is whether um, the, 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 the court would grant their request. And if the court says the convention goes on, then they are lucky. They have no more problems. But if for any reason in the world uh, the court says, no, you can have your convention, it means that uh, by now they should have developed plan B. So it's up to them whether they are that proactive or not. But whichever way it comes, there's, um, there's, there's anxiety within PDP. And uh, how they sort it out is up to how ingenious they can be. I don't think that that's for us to break our heads here. They will sort it out one way or the other. But the easiest thing they could have done was just to get into political um, solution with the uh, secondus 
and then he probably would withdraw the case. But maybe they take a chance and they believe that um, it would go in their favor. And if it goes in their favor, then secondaries would have lost out um, completely, not only by the convention going on, but with the future of the party, he would be seen as one who is defeated and one should not have a lot to discuss with him. Mm. But there are also reports saying that uh, effort has been made to dissuade him, but it, it feels like it's not yielding any positive result. But like you have rightly mentioned, uh, that is entirely their concern. However, let's see how things pan out. But I uh, would also look at another, still on the leadership, uh, Nigeria's population growing by 5 million annually. That's what the vice president is quoted to say. And uh, just the... Uh, in 2021, you have the United Nations saying uh, the Nigerian population is about 211. We're looking at 211 million persons, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, what do you make of the fact that we are growing by 5 million annually? I mean, some persons will say, uh, when was the last time we had a population census? How do we come up with these figures? Do we have uh, some formulas? that we come up with all of the statistics? Uh, the very first thing is um, the last issue that you raised. Exactly what is our population? We live in a country where there's so much mysteries around virtually everything, and it doesn't make sense. And it is understandable why it has to be so, because revenue sharing is based on not productivity, but on <laughs> you know such nebulous things like like population population is supposed to aid in planning knowing the number of people that you have helps you to know the social infrastructure that you must make provision for it helps you to know how to plan to meet the needs per head which is very important and the essence of government and governance but unfortunately we do not think of it that way. For us, population and planning is about sharing money. And when you talk in terms of sharing money, people are going to count fowls and dogs and cows and all and have give you inflated figures. People are going to tell you that there's thick population where you really don't expect it to be and that there's lighter population exactly what is the population of nigeria when you are on air and you're traveling from one part of this country to the other and you see uh, the places that people uh, inhabit you just ask yourself are we really honest with ourselves so as on a very very personal note i have a lot of reservation a lot of personal reservation and i think that the day we change this sharing formula from you know population to productivity which is why people are talking in terms of resource control by the time that you are doing the resources of your state why do you think that <laughs> governments are now going into ghost workers why because they know that they've got to pay these people and that these people are not really existent so we gotta whip them out because they're going to spend their money to pay the workers they now say we don't we don't want ghost workers now, when you have a situation where you are going to get resources and then deploy your resources to meet the people, you are going to find the need for you to have the proper population of each state. If God blesses me and I become the governor of my state, the first thing I'll do is run my own population. Do you understand me? And know exactly the number of people that I have, the number of heads per location, and that will help me to plan the proper infrastructure or social infrastructure for such locations, for such people. And I think that every government, but when the governors are afraid to do that because they don't want to expose their real numbers and at the end of the day get less. Please forget the, 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 the center. Do the proper thing. And then at the end of the day, you'll be the better for it because your people will get exactly what they want, where they need it, and how they need it. 
that to me is what governance is all about all this fake thing that we do of being very very deceitful the more deceitful you are as a nation the less productive you can be and the less competitive that is why we have unfortunately earned ourselves that ignoble tag of being the the, the the poverty capital of the world india is about seven times our population and yet we have more poor people than india isn't that just something that should make us bury our heads in shame i do not blame the politicians i think the time has come when we that call ourselves the elite should rise to defend this nation to help this nation to redefine politics and governance to get involved join any party you wish i don't care that's my uh, take on this but uh, let's move away from that now and check out the nation newspaper you have Governors lobby senators and reps against direct primaries. Uh, why do you think go governors are lobbying uh, these senators against direct primaries? I mean, there's a lot of uh, positives, uh, positive arguments for uh, direct primaries, and, and I'm sure that that's why you have uh, the lawmakers saying political parties should opt for direct primaries. People need to understand what direct primaries and indirect primaries is then they will understand why governors will do everything possible to make sure that there is nothing like direct primaries. Indirect primaries almost have the list of the delegates come from the governors. They decide who should be the delegates. These are largely his appointees. So he brings them together. He has absolute control of the machinery so if he doesn't want you to be a, a candidate you can never emerge as a candidate that's number one on the other hand indirect primaries goes back to every member of the party these members of the party decide so it becomes very difficult for any of the governors to have direct hold on members of the party. It becomes easier for anybody who is popular amongst the, 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 the party members to win the ticket. So it's like taking the power directly from the control of the governors. The governors don't have, you know, that sweeping. As a matter of fact, a lot of governors are not liked by the people. A lot of governors. They emerged as governors not because they are acceptable, but because they were imposed on the people. So when you want to, in fact, a governor's candidate is a direct failure abination before, before you even start in direct primaries. And the governors, that's why the, 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 the National Assembly members, who know that they are not in good terms with their governors, would rather go for direct primaries because they are the people who have been doing things for, the, you know, for, for their party members while they were in office. So they had created a bond with their party members. But these same party members literally loathe the governors. So if you go for direct primaries, it benefits the members of the National Assembly while it disenfranchises the governors. That is why they are unanimous in agreeing that there should be indirect primaries. And then the governors are now, you know, bearing their fangs and say, no, you've got to reverse that. They are threatening. We will not give you ticket. But how can you say you will not give me a ticket when you don't even have a ticket? In direct primaries, governors don't have a ticket. It's about the people. You know, the only difference in this case is that long before now systems and structures should have been put in place i did an open letter to the national chairman of INEC, and i think they should revisit I, I was a national chairman of a party so i understand the dynamics and everything that is going on and i did that party membership is right now so fluid that it's difficult a man can actually vote in three or four parties he can belong to three or four parties but i did a memo to the national chairman of INEC, which i wish he had adopted that that would have been fantastic. You have membership in three categories. You have, you know, um, um, members with PVC who are paying members that um, are active members. You have members with PVC who have not paid their dues as B. You have people who may even be juniors, minors as C. So these financially active members with PVC will be the people that can vote in primaries. These ones 
that have PVC but do not have, do not pay, you know, will not vote. That encourages every party member to be financially active. That now brings money to the parties and parties can run independent of godfathers and systems. That's just the most simple and beautiful and basic thing. If you don't want to vote on primaries, no problem, you can stay away. But if you know you want to vote, become active paying my members. And that's just a token that they pay. Maybe 500, uh, maybe 1,000 per year, just something minimal. By the time you do that, everybody wants to vote, so they look for money and pay. The party has money. They can now run independent of governors, independent of godfathers, independent of money bags. That's when you start to have parties. Then the third category can even be, which I said, you don't have PVC, and you can even be junior. Even secondary school, you can have junior members of the party. People should grow into the ideology of the party from secondary schools, you know, into, you know, adulthood or full membership of the party. Once you do this very simple thing, it becomes very easy for you to know the membership of the party and to do direct primaries, which can even do online at the time like this on direct primaries. All you need is systems and structures that can capture that and need to be done. All right. Uh, there's also another interesting uh, headline on the Nation newspaper. It talks about the fact that the e era, shortly after it was launched, uh, you can't find the app on the Google Play Store. And that calls for a lot of concern at the point where uh, the issue of whether Nigerians were accepted and uh, uh, how soon they can adapt to it and the workability. But do you see this app, you know, uh, surviving? You, you, you know, you know, we live in a very interesting country and interesting times. It's such a shame that the Central Bank of Nigeria will create an app and within days that app will be removed. It didn't disappear, it was removed from the Play Store. It's such an indictment on the system because we think we can do anything, anyhow. And it doesn't work that way. Countries, organizations, corporate bodies have ways that they operate. And you have to follow their systems and procedures. And I expected that my government in wanting to get an app in the Play Store, whoever is their IT consultant would have understood all the dynamics, all the expectations of that, you know, um, setup, the Play Store, and they would have complied so that whatever needed to be done, whether it is integrity tests, whether it is, you know, agreeing with their rules running by their systems and laws, all those things would have been done, whether it is payment, everything. And then when it gets up there, I mean, like my church would have an app in the Play Store and it's running. And it's, I mean, for years it's going on, no, no problem. And yet my country will have an app in the Play Store and within days it is removed. Now, do you know what Central Bank has done? They came with, you know, these guys are very, very, very disingenuous. They came up with a, with a distracting view of, oh, there is a fake app or a fake this that is going on. Instead of them addressing the issue of telling us why that app has been removed from the Play Store, they are telling us there's a fake, a fake Twitter handle, there's a fake this, this, this. For goodness sake, what's my business there? Mine is that I can't get this, this app and, and be able to use. And by the time people People lose that momentum and that interest and people start to wonder and have doubt and bring speculations into what's happening. It could be an honest mistake. Come out. Tell us, okay, yeah, their law says we should not do this and that, which we did. And as a result, they have taken us out. We've complete and we're complied and we're going right back. Or there was this to be done, that to be done. We have done it, so we're right back. So you restore confidence and you lose that speculation of people saying, because we are going to come and say, oh boy, be like, say, this is no work, or ah, no start, or if you put your money, as they remove them from place to another, so the thing will just stop, one day hand, all your money go go. And people, once people do that, they will just avoid it like a plague. 
And that's not good for us. So let the system come up and tell us why it was removed from the Play Store and what they have done about it and restore confidence. Okay, that uh, is cerebral governance. That's the way things are done. You know, with all of these apps and uh, how it functions, usually when you have an app in a store, Google Play Store, your iOS, uh, usually you have reviews about product and all of that. So um, people actually went there to drop bad reviews about the app, and that's why it was taken off. It happens with every other app. It happens with every other product. I mean, if you have bad reviews and bad comments about it, it will be taken out. So uh, it brings us back to the question of will, because uh, first of all, this is the issue of uh, at the time where you have the government uh, saying, oh, you can't not trade with this blockchain uh, technology it was bad and all of that. And then we come up with our own. Uh, so it feels like the people who have a trust issue and do not believe in it. I feel that the government has a lot of work and responsibility in that direction. But let's move away from that conversation now and also talk about the Anambra election, which is slated still state because the federal government is still insisting that the elections will go on. And IPOP is also still insisting that uh, uh, the sit at home order should also go on, asking people to sit at home from the 5th of November through the 10th of November. Now, uh, the, the question also, on this other hand, you have the um, the Ohanese stakeholders in this particular region asking for peace. Do you see a point of compromise? Do you think that there would be some uh, meeting point where uh, some persons would begin to shift ground and then uh, we might just have uh, a good time? I, I, I think that one has to know where to draw a line between grandstanding and facing issues. IPOP, unfortunately, has been given a space to operate. And they have taken a hold of that space, not in the way that I would wish it were, but in a way that they have decided to do. And the federal government, unfortunately, again, is not proactive. And a lot of people do not see beyond their nose. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar that could discern the signs of the times. The, in Ait City, there are people that, are, that project the future. Your phone that you have, that phone was done about 10 years ago, and they kept testing and testing. The technology that we will use in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, is being developed today. That we use that technology today does not mean that that technology came up today. It came up, it was came up about 10 years ago, some 15 years ago, some 20 years ago. Why am I saying this? There ought to be people in government who are strategic thinkers and for for casters. They can see tomorrow before tomorrow comes. They ought to have seen today. But let me take a little space and tell you that the prognosis of what is going to happen in Anambra State, if we allow it to happen, if we allow IPOP to make Anambra election to fail, the the significance, the purport is going to be much more than election did not hold in Anambra. It's going to embolden other militias, other ethnic groups who can now take us to, hold us to ransom. And you may discover that it could go into the next election in a kitty or something like that. And if we don't control it early enough, since we don't have this capacity, we don't seem to be thinking ahead, it could go into our general elections and it could throw this country into the chaos that we can never imagine. A chaos of gargantuan proportion. So I think that the first thing that people should do is to swallow their pride. This IPOB, we call them, or ESA, they have nothing to lose, absolutely nothing to lose. I like the style that is being adopted by Ohanese. Sometimes you stoop to conquer. Yesterday, in one of the stations, a man like Andy Uba, Ifan Uba, Ifan Uba, I think, if I was Ifan Uba, 
He said he sought permission to go and have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with Nandi Kanu. And I think he was denied. This is a time for SSS or DSS to pick one, two, three people and let them have a full night meeting with Namdi Kanu. Let them listen to him. That is the first line. The second line is some federal government people should join in that meeting. The third line is that some of Namdi Kanu's people should join that meeting within three days. There should be intensive meetings where nobody knows it's not a media event, nothing is reported anywhere. And the aim should be let's nip this in the board. Let this thing be called off. Let's have an election. Some people's pride is going to be wounded, but that's a price you are going to pay for nationhood. When you have a madman run away with your, you were, you were bathing in the stream. And a madman collects your dress and runs away with it. For you to run to go and teach him a lesson is for you to just make yourself worse than a madman. Wisdom demands that you sit down, you think, you strategize, and even beg that lady with a wrapper. Beg her to sorry, oh, somebody has taken away my please. Can you, when you cover yourself properly and find a way of getting, then you can go after the madman when all said and done. But right now, we want to grandstand. We want to teach him. We don't care. We, are we thinking of our future? Are we thinking of this country? Are we thinking of the larger implications of what is going on? Let the federal government, let the DSS, this night, carry private jets, pick one, two, three strategic people, have a meeting with Namdi Kanu all night. By the next day, let them bring one, two, three of Namdi Kanu's people to join in that meeting. By the third day, let them bring one, two, three of federal government people who are going to give them this, these assurances. Within three days, let us have these meetings, maximum three days. And the next thing you know is that Namdi Kanu, because nobody knows about it. If Namdi Kanu says something from that place and his people don't reoccur it outside, it's not going to work. So the DSS should have known about ESN. They should have known about IPOP. They should have known about Namdi Kanu. They should have known about the strategic people that are needed in this operation. Let me call it that. If need be, bring certain statesmen. Go to Namdi Kanu. You, there must be something he respects. There must be somebody he respects. Everybody has a weakness somewhere. Everybody does. Bring that person, whatever he does, whether it's his girlfriend, whether it is his mother, whether it is his uncle, whether it is his business associate, bring it's about strategic thinking, wanting to get a certain result. This sit at home thing must not be, we must not want to try him out and see what he will do. It will be an evil wind that will blow no one no good. Please, I beg, let them do this. All right, uh, this is the much that we can take. It's a delight to uh, hear you share your thoughts every other time uh, with us right here. We do appreciate your time. Mr. Ezekiel Nya, I took thank you so much for being part of the uh, conversation this morning. We will step on the brakes now. When we return, uh, the conversation uh, will bring you up to speed with what's hap what happened today in history. Please stick around.